Thank you. Um, Alexander, um, I'm from Mannheim in Germany. Uh, I'm uh, a developer of my own company. Uh, I'm a Monk organizer uh, as well. Um, I'm a speaker, sometimes a MongoDB trainer for, local, for our local community and for the Python community. I've uh, served as a program workgroup co-chair um, building this conference. So if you have any comments, suggestions, what we could do better or so, I'm, I'm around. Just grab, talk to me. I'm very interested in your intro. Uh, my talk today is uh, MongoDB and what's uh, the MongoDB aggregation framework. Uh, the, we're going to cover the pipeline bottle, the pipeline stages, and MapReduce uh, in uh, MongoDB. And uh, at first, um, who knows MongoDB? Just OK, awesome. And uh, who's actually working with MongoDB? OK. And who has worked with the MongoDB aggregation framework? OK, cool. OK. Um, so let's bring uh, everybody up to speed with uh, orientated document orientated databases in 15 seconds. Basically, we work with uh, J uh, the document as a JSON like object. We can store it in our database. We have no schema enforcement. Yeah, um, a collection is basically um, just a collection of documents, actually, and um, multiple collections make up our database. So, very easy. It's a pretty simple. Um, concept of oh, the MongoDB aggregation framework was introduced about like three years ago uh, with MongoDB 2.2. Uh, it's a framework for data aggregation. Uh, basically, the documents uh, are processed through a multiple stage uh, pipeline and uh, that's giving, aggregated, giving back aggregated results. It's basically uh, designed to work straightforward. So no unions like in SQL. Um, and uh, and uh, technically, this looks like this. So we have our documents. We do a match, which is a find. We get less documents because we found some, this found set. And then we do some grouping, and we get even less. But uh, actually, I thought it's a little bit too technical. So because basically, I think it's more like a relay race. You know, like relay racers, they, they go and they, they, they pass the button to each other. And basically, this is how uh, the MongoDB pipeline works. Um, so uh, we have our match, which is fine. So we say to, please, little doggy, get the button. Yeah? Please pass it on to the smart fox doing something smart, which could be like a grouping. And then we want to present our data a little bit more nicely. And so we pass it on uh, to the projection space. And um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the SATA set we're going to work. I'm going to do present. Uh, and what we're doing, and I'm, uh, I've also prepared some live demos, and um, uh, this is built with MongoDB. Oops, hang on. Yes. Um, so we're using MongoDB 3.0. Um, the new white tiger, uh, tiger uh, um, storage engine with gives us uh, compression. Uh, PyMongo uh, is obviously the driver we are going to use. It's um, maintained by MongoDB themselves, and it's pretty uh, well-maintained uh, driver. It's always up to date. It's really good. And we're working on a data set of uh, 37 gigabytes, which gives us compressed with white tiger about nine gigabytes of RAM. Um, basically, um, as you might remember, IT is my second career. Uh, I used to be in the uh, record industry with a techno house startup business in the 90s. So everything I do still in IT is very close to working with music. Um, so we have uh, from a project we're doing, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, called Chartgeist. We have some a collection of uh, playlists from the iTunes Music Store. A playlist is basically um, the, all the information about the release uh, you can find in the iTunes Music Score. Uh, it's um, a set of playlists that appeared in some charts somewhere around the world within the last three years. And basically, this is uh, how it looks like. So uh, pretty cool. So. Um, but uh, don't worry, I've, um, I've narrowed it down to um, what we're going to work with today, just to give you an impression about our document structure for the, for the demos. So basically, uh, this is a document. An info is all the release information, so like the album artist, the album name, when it was released, how much is it in store, and the children. Um, that's, that's what we call a sub-document. Uh, it's, it's a list with... Uh, yeah, uh, objects, and that's basically uh, the songs. Uh, each and every song we, we have in our playlist. And I was wondering, actually, um, which artists to use for my demos. 
because it's really hard to choose music, artists, making everybody happy, and I thought I found something neutral because I chose Taylor Swift. Yeah. And it's not because I like her music, actually I, actually I don't know any songs of her, but she did this great blog post, um, uh, making Apple pay for the trial period for the new uh, Apple Music servers. Um, so artists get paid more money for people using a new service by Apple, so she did a good thing, and I think that's uh, really worth mentioning her even at, at EuroPython. So, okay. <laughs> so, um, let's build our first pipeline. Um, uh, I've commented in some notes for the SQL guys to make it e e easier. So basically, um, this is a pipeline. A pipeline is basically uh, passed in as a list uh, into uh, uh, PyMongo. And uh, match is just basically a find, as you might remember from our document. Uh, it's the artist name, so we were looking for um, the artist, which is a variable I've stored already um, as Taylor Swift, of course. Then we're going to do um, a projected. Basically, it's a select, and basically, we all, all we want to do is uh, print out the uh, uh, yeah all the releases by uh, Taylor Swift sorted. So then uh, let me switch to this and go here. So basically, it's just the import. We import PyMongo. This is just like a simple uh, database connection. And um, so let's see our database, which is live on this MacBook. Um, I must say, it's only assigned two gigabytes of RAM for this database. So it's not usually we work with a lot more RAM uh, in MongoDB. Uh, so we have uh, 1.3 million playlists found, and that's about like 17 million songs covered in our data set. And um, usually you could, like, if you do a match, it could also like just like a query, and our query says, okay, we found 40, 93 uh, releases of Taylor Swift. So, and with the aggregation framework, um, that's the same code I've shown you on the slide before. Uh, we do a match, find, project, basically, um, just like we are just project here. It's just like a renaming uh, of the attribute, actually, and then we sort by uh, release ascending order. And basically, that's looking like this. Okay, you see, we have many releases. She's quite busy, artist, famous, karaoke. Okay, so, and um, what else can we do? We can extend our pipeline. Um, we can do uh, a grouping. So now I want to group everything by name, which is basically the album tab. But as you probably see, we have a lot of du duplicates. You have done some duplicates in our data set, which is because albums are released by different companies worldwide. So uh, at the iTunes store, they get a, a new ID. They're basically different products, although it's the same contents um, from the music. So um, the passing in um, the name as underscore ID. Underscore ID is in the grouping operator basically what we want to group by. Yeah, it's, it's mandatory and it's always called underscore ID. And we want to count how many albums are there. Um, a count, we don't have a count operator in the aggregation pipelines. Um, so basically, we're just summing one for each and every document in our group. And then we project and sort just to make it a little bit more nice. And this is what we get. We still have some different versions. Where is my? Yeah, so. Okay. So, okay, now we've uh, this nice pipeline. We've got our results, and I think it's so, it's, it's so nice. Let's print out what we found with, again. And we get this. And it's so nice, I just want to print it again. And oops, what happens? I've just. I just actually just rest is where we stored uh, uh, our query to the aggregation framework, and I just wanted to print it again. And what, what what's happening here? Why why doesn't it give us any result back? Um, that's like the first trap caveat I want to show you is um, MongoDB aggregation framework. It returns a cursor. So basically, the cursor it shows just it, it points to the data in the database. So uh, you get back to uh, from from the MongoDB aggregation. So once we call list, the cursor is exhausted. So get all the data in, and then they're printed, and then they're gone. So you can't just use them again unless, of course, you store them 
in a new variable. Um, all right, then um, let's go back here. Okay. So these are all our aggregation stages. Um, I've put uh, the like their SQL brothers uh, uh, on the right hand side. So basically, a match is a where or having operator uh, sort. Pretty obvious is um, order by limit is also I think. No, no explanation necessary. Project is a select, and we can also use it for renaming, as in SQL for um, uh, our result. Group is group by, unwind, um, and we're going to uh, go into that uh, very soon, is somehow a little bit of a join, uh, not really, and uh, redact uh, we're not going to cover, uh, and out is basically just an operator, please uh, send to the result of the aggregation back to a new collection in MongoDB to store it. So to make things a little bit easier for you to fall, it's um, in the next we're going to uh, do something with the artist name and name is the album title. And we're making our pipeline a little bit even bigger, like with the group operator, what I've already shown you already. This is how it looks like, prints out a little bit more nicely. And next step is how can we work with lists of soft documents? Um, so, um, as you see, we have a list here, just uh, with uh, all the um, songs on that album, and we want to do something with it. And of course, um, the natural thing would be I query the database and just iterate over it with Mongo, uh, with Python. Sorry, um, uh, but that's uh, quite an extensive task, um, we can do it in the database, and there's this um, unwind operator, and uh, it's uh, basically, uh, from, from my experience, it's at first sight a really confusing step, because it's quite um, unusual uh, for what I've seen. So um, it confuses people. And um, so uh, I think just like, uh, let's I just show you, I think it's um, probably the best explanation because what Unwind does is basically take all the subdocuments in the, the list and for each object in our subdocument list, it creates a new document. And this sounds really like an expensive operation, but I can assure you that I did a really good job and it is not expensive at all. It's really handy and basically, um, you show it? This is like what we're doing now. So, um, and of course, I'm really sorry. Oh, let's go to that later. <laughs> um, here we are. I'm sorry. So, let's do this. So, um, so now we have all 332 songs by Taylor Swift. Uh, found them, uh, we, uh, and uh, we, we can immediately work with them uh, here in our um, uh, grouping uh, stage. And as you see, the path has not really changed, although this used to be a list before. And we don't do, we, there's no need to do, to do anything about, about like iterating over like a list index or anything like that. And um, I've prepared a little bit more like here, this is basically what's happening. Um, so it's basically we just get one, one, one release uh, at limit, we get one playlist, and um, then we do unwind, and then I'm just renaming it with the project parameter. So this is basically what we are getting. Um, we're getting all these are single documents, new documents, just like rated on the fly, we can Im immediately work with. So basically, it's basically like uh, just, yeah, yeah, it's an unwinding of the data. It's a little bit unusual concept, but it's basically really uh, simple. So, but, okay, so, let's go back up. Go, 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 go. So. Okay, another one which is a um, quite obvious one. Where we go? Sorry. Here we want to go. So, okay. That's, um, we have also like a sort, which is also like an obvious uh, pipeline stage. And I want all the releases uh, just 
sorted by count, uh, descending, and release ascending. And it basically, it looks really simple. And um, it returns us something like this. And uh, what's going wrong? <laughs> Something's wrong because we said I want by count descending over all our data, and then I want to have it sorted by release in ascending order. But our result is basically by uh, release and then by count. So something's going wrong here, and um, I can assure you it's not uh, we're not it's not broken. It's actually like a trap because. We, in the pipeline, we pass in a Python dictionary. And the Python dictionary, of course, is in unsorted. Um, and of course, so um, we just pass in something which is not ordered. And of course, our results get a little bit unpredictable. Um, but of course, um, um, that's, uh, that's like, uh, there's a solution. And uh, I can encourage you always to use uh, Son from uh, Bison uh, collection, or you can also uh, use collection order dig and pass in all sort parameters like, as an, um, in an ordered fashion, yeah? because otherwise you, uh, your sorting order won't, won't really work. And so this, and oh wow, it works. So nice. So, okay. Mary. Okay, so this was just like a really quick introduction to uh, stages. Uh, there's a lot of stages, as mentioned before, like it's a skip, it's just like skipping documents out, um, write your results to uh, um, a new collection. Um, there's a NeoGear, which uh, just gives you uh, all the documents around um, um, a, a ge geospatial point. Um, Redact is I don't know, it's, it's, some people use it to uh, restrict document access on a doc document level, but I've never really seen it in production. And um, these are like the stages. This is like our race. And now we have some beta. And basically this is very limited from what we can do. Basically it's just like mangling around a little bit with the data. So um, we have more. Of course there's like a minimum, a maximum, uh, first and last operator. And this is, what we're going to work on. Again, we're searching for an artist. Um, we're using release date and a release date epoch. And the subtle distance is that a release date epoch is actually a date. And the release date is a string. It's no date. It's a string. And um, we're building a new pipeline. Uh, we're doing a grouping um, by what we want to find out. I want to find out what's the earliest release of Taylor Swift and what's the latest release of Taylor Swift. So we do a grouping by underscore ID. Um, as you see, underscore ID is empty. Um, it's our new primary key. How can that be empty? Yes, it can be empty because we want a group of our um, complete result so set. So we can just put none in there or leave it empty. So there's no need to look for an attribute which is the same on each and every document, just leave it empty. And we introduce new, two new attributes, min date, max date, and basically it's a really simple operation. We just walk the path info to, release, to, 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 to the information, um, min, max, uh, and project it. And uh, let's show. Run that, and yay! Now Taylor Swift is around. Things 2006. I think she started really early. She's like um, releasing stuff, and she's been around for a while. And um, so, um, what's what's first and last good for? I mean, we have min max. Um, it also would work actually on 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 min max. Would work actually on an array. Um, just but it's. Uh, it's, it's just like a little bit different and it, gave, and it can save you um, some uh, extra calculations. Um, what's the difference? Um, the difference to our previous pipeline is we have a mesh and then we do a sort by release date. And then we do our grouping and our grouping instruction is first and last. And what does first and last do? It's really simple. Get the first document of the group and last is get 
the last document of the group. So there's no need to iterate over your complete set within the group to find min or max values. Basically, you just can say, okay, I want this document, I want to look at this document, and what's in the middle, I don't really care. Um, so this can be really effective. Um, and as expected, same results. So, and uh, with dates, we can uh, even do more. We have some nice date operators. The pipeline, we do basically the same. We sort by release date, we do a grouping, and I want to have releases grouped by year. I'm a fanboy now. Um, I've talked so much about Taylor Swift, I want to really know everything. So I want to have, see which year, which release. So, uh, how many releases per year, sorry. Um, so, um, we have actually, we extended our ID a little bit, and now it's, it's, it's an object with our dollar year operator. And um, we pass in the date, oh, uh, epoch, which is the date, and we just pass it in, and, and the dollar year will basically just grab the year from our date, and uh, this is then our ID we want to group by, and um, this works like this. It's really easy. It makes it really easy if you have some uh, data with time stamps, and so we see, okay, count. So you see she's, she's like a bee. She's releasing every year, a lot of releases. She's a hard worker. Um, and um, so, but what if I want to dig even deeper? I'm not interested in getting um, the releases by year. I'm also interested in getting uh, each, the release count for each and every month. She has released something. And of course, I wouldn't mention it if we couldn't accomplish it. In the year, we also have a month operator. And the next thing what happened uh, is now the ID, which is our primary key, can also be a multi-key. Um, and so we have a multi-key year, month, and basically we do the same um, uh, as before. We get the year and the month, new attribute. Our ID key has two, is, is built out of two attributes, year and, um, uh, and month. And let's just, let's just run that, and wow, we see. I haven't checked. That's probably not a month. No, hardly any month she didn't do anything. So, um, well, there's a lot of more date operators. As you can guess, there's also like a second minute, many more date operators. I'm just not able, we're not able to cover them all uh, in this small talk. Um, I've covered that, but um, it's, I'm, I'm getting a little bit bored now with Taylor Swift because I, it's early in the morning and I, we want some, some more tension. So actually, I thought about who could and else, who could join? And so I thought, hey, I just Google uh, Taylor Swift Nemesis, and Google says it's um, an alien space robot called Katy Perry. Yeah? Um, and so uh, let's, bring Katy, let's bring in Katy Perry, and it's really easy. Um, we can extend our match operator, so uh, Katy Perry is, is now uh, stored in a ne our Nemesis variable, and basically we can also do searches with a dollar in operator, and it's basically just the same as in Python, so I think it's not really necessary um, uh, to explain to you guys. So, and of course, now we have a um, big competition. I'm wondering um, who delivers more uh, song value uh, for my 99 cents. Is it Katy Perry? Is it Taylor Swift? So I want to see the average playtime of their songs. Um, I'm interested who gives gives me more songs, longer songs I can enjoy for my money. Um, so it's not a good thing, but it's just like a nice example. <laughs> so um, what are we doing? Um, as you see, we now have three unwind stages. So <laughs> basically, the first thing is we unwind the songs, and then we unwind the song offers. The song offers, and then within those song offers assets is basically the, the, the playtime stored. Um, so, and we want to access the, this uh, information, so that's why we have a pipeline of one, two, three, unwind. It's unwind, 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 and then we can group by just going down the path by uh, the song name, which is an, uh, a childhood name, and then we just do an average of the path of our long, uh, of the duration we have stored within the assets. 
and let me show you. It's like, yep, this, and something's wrong. Something's really wrong. Okay, sorry, and just fix that. Okay, something's broken. I'm very sorry. Um, won't waste any time to fix this now live. Um, so basically, what I can explain you. Um, basically, it's just like the same we did before um, with the releases here um, and uh, counting the releases. And the next step, of course, would be getting uh, the playtime. So I hope my notebook didn't break. Yes, oh, it didn't break. <laughs> okay. Sorry again. Um, of course, uh, we have all group, all playtime, and we just project it. And as a result, we can see okay, uh, Taylor Swift gives us more, more music, like about like 10% more music than Katy Perry for 99 cents. And um, it's a really easy uh, operation. So. Okay, now something. Something a little bit more challenging. Um, I'm interested in. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm interested in getting uh, the prices of the releases of the the, the, the artists uh, and um, my. Um, it's, it's basically scraped data, so it's not probably as clean as I would wish. Uh, this basically we see a formatted price with uh, the currency in front and the price, but it's just like in one attribute and. Um, I'm interested in getting uh, the prices uh, in U.S. dollars, um, and that's, uh, that's easily to solve with a string operation and a compare operation. So um, I have to speed up a little bit. Um, basically, we do a project phase, so just focus on the, 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 the things in bold. They're important ones here. And we have is U.S. dollar. Basically, is a comparison of the lower strings of the first three characters in our price formatted, which gives us uh, back um, US dollar or some currencies or numbers or whatever. And the comparison is basically, is this US dollars? Um, it's pretty obvious. And then we just do a new match for is dollars zero. Yeah. Um, OK, it also feels a little bit wrong, but compare parameter gives us zero back when it's a match. And it gives us um, minus one back if the value is higher, and one back if the the value is lower. So it's pretty, uh, pretty handy one. We could also do uh, is equal. There's also an equal operator, which would give us like one or two back, as we expected, as a Boolean true false. Um, then we sort um, a group, and uh, we can even do uh, something, something else. We can also go and push every release we find in our group uh, into a new list. Uh, with the price and the product um, that's um, basically very similar to JavaScript post it would be like actually like in a, in an append in, in Python. So let's go here, back, and here you go. And you see Katy Perry, Perry Katy Perry's products, and here's Taylor's next. And the next, next object, Taylor Swift, and a, re, uh, a list of all their products. So, there's really a lot more operators. Um, uh, and uh, just, I, I can suggest, if you, if, if you find uh, the aggregation framework, is probably useful. Just go to the MongoDB documentation. It's very well written. It uh, has a lot of examples. It's, it's, it's quite easy to get into. And, uh, and one more, uh, it's a variable operator, it's, it's, it's a map operator, and as you can imagine, it's basically the same as a Python map. Um, and what, what do we do here? Um, we're getting the ratings count, which is actually how many users have given some stars to the product when we scrape the data. Um, and we want to adjust it a little bit because our management is our back and we need to make it a little bit, look at it a little bit nicer. Um, what we don't really want to do, but uh, it's just like a good example. Um, so basically, we can pass in uh, to uh, 
the dollar map and input the ratings count um, as value, and then we can just reuse the value on our list, and we just like add 10 to each and every object in our or value we find in our list, and then it's applied. Um, then another thing which is not pr probably obvious, we cannot use a sum operator on an, uh, on a list like we can do really it's really handy in Python. Yeah, uh, we have to unwind first. Yeah, so basically for each and every value in our list we have mangled with we unwind it to a new document, and then we can do a simple grouping as we've done before and um, and there we go, which brings us back, of course, to the next thing. Um, you can also do MapReduce in MongoDB. And how many of you guys work with MapReduce? Or who knows MapReduce? Yes. And who actually works a lot with MapReduce? OK, so bring everybody up to speed. MapReduce, basically, it's a really simple concept. We have all these documents. Um, we map them. Map them is basically we just go through and we find key value pairs, which is actually, uh, in our word, example, we find to find the most popular words in, in our release titles. And we just emit them uh, as tuples, as you can see, to the reduce phase, which is run by the reducer. In our example, it will just like sum up the counts. Um, it's really, really pretty, pretty easy operation. Um, basically, we just will use our name operator. Um, and uh, you might wonder, why would we use MapReduce in MongoDB? So because we have this uh, great aggregation framework, you see in substrings, we can so, do so many things. So what's the point actually in being in, in using MapReduce? And, and uh, it's uh, basically for most for mo most of the time, you can work with the aggregation framework. Uh, in most of the cases, it's faster, it's more accessible, thank you. Um, and, uh, but, however, MapReduce gives us more power because you can actually pass in JavaScript there. And then you can build much more, uh, uh, more complex queries. And for example, for our example, with splitting up, um, the release titles in each in, in words to, to count them was it could be quite challenging in the aggregation framework. So um, let's do it. So okay, this is map. Okay, so we, let, let me show you a little bit more. Okay, um, okay, this fits. Okay, no, oh, sorry, that's our map and. MapReduce. So for MapReduce, we're just using um, from BSIM import code, which we can just pass on um, text. And we, this is the JavaScript function. And what does this JavaScript function do? It basically stores um, the name of the, 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 the info, which is stored in the name uh, uh, attribute. Uh, it just stores the, it uh, and splits it. It's, it's a really simple operation. And then it just uh, we just check uh, for uh, some uh, uh, punctuation and stuff, remove it. It's probably it's not the best way to do this. It's just like for the simple example. And if we actually find a word, we emit it. So basically, if there's something like um, uh, teenage, um, we emit teenage one. And if the album is called Teenage Dreams, um, we can do also emit dreams one. We send it to the reducer. And the reducer has really simple code here. We just take all the keys and uh, basically just count just do some uh, how, how often did the keyword actually appear from our emitter. And here we get a result. And this is, um, and now we're going to do a little bit more because I'm, I want to remove stop words, which is not really part of the aggregation framework, but just to make it a little bit nicer. That's why I've uh, added the natural language kit, remove stop words. And this is like the most popular words in Katy Perry and uh, um, Taylor Swift's albums. So you see, um, they probably have a younger audience with Dream and Teenage and One and Boys and uh, Fearless and Speak, uh, Kissed and uh, stuff. So um, yeah, it's really, um, it's, um, it's really easy. Of course, 
would take to, to, would uh, unfortunately we don't have enough time left. We could also run this operation across the complete data set and to see what's uh, basically the most popular words uh, in album releases uh, being sold at the iTunes music store. So, um, to finish, um, I want to give you some more uh, best practices and tips you can uh, uh, use with the aggregation framework. First of all, database, think about your indexes, especially if you do queries on them. Of course, if you have a huge data set and you don't have an index, um, MongoDB has a collection scan, and if it's a slow computer, uh, it's, um, of course, taking time and um, probably frustrating for you. Um, think about probably getting your data um, set, your database, to, to your RAM, you can just touch commands in, in MongoDB, which actually do something like, yeah, similar to Unix touch. Um, you touch it, and then it fills up your RAM and, uh, as, as much as possible, um, as much as we'll ever get from the system um, to store data. Uh, you can work with life and in, uh, in, in, in memory. Um, you have to mind that the result can be only like 60 megabytes, because that's uh, the queue, that's the maximum we can store in a BJSON document, but I mean like 60 megabytes is still huge. Um, pipeline operation has also a limit of 100 dB, but you will hardly ever, sounds not much, but you hardly will ever really hit it. Um, on your queries, you can improve your queries up front. There's this nice, oh, sorry for the break here, that's um, a nice explain operation, which will basically give you information what would MongoDB do when query, doing your query. Um, and you get some results, you see how many documents scanned, if indexes were hit, if it was all indexed, and then you can really go and say, okay, um, I can really op optimize uh, all my work with just like introducing a new index. Uh, hardware is, uh, of course, really important, especially RAM, more is better, and that's really simple equation here. Um, mind the disk performance, uh, of course, SSDs and cloud computing makes it really easy, and um, yeah, and you can also uh, think about working about in a, with a dedicated server in case you have something like a replica set and a write heavy uh, uh, database. Uh, uh, so you can also say, okay, just do another copy and work locally and do your aggregations without uh, uh, having to worry about if you have a lot of traffic in your database. And the last slide is some useful resources. Of course, as I mentioned, MongoDB um, is, uh, uh, has a very good documentation. It's very updated by Mongo as well. And I also want to may mention uh, Asia Kamsky. Uh, she works for MongoDB uh, also as a trainer. Um, and she has always like awesome tricks and tips. And here we go. Thank you. Uh, we don't quite have enough time for Q&A, so if you want to ask uh, Alexander questions, then uh, try to find him instead. Yeah, Thank you. I'm around. Just ask any time. No problem. Thank you.